everybody. Um, I wanted to make a little video. Um, first, I hope everyone's doing okay. Um, I haven't made a video in quite a while. I haven't done any of my um, oracle or tarot reading because I'm super busy with my uh, 9 to 5 job. Um, school's going to start, so we've been crazy hectic busy, and I am completely working from home now. Uh, full time, which means I brought my phone home with me, so I'm answering calls at home non stop. <laughs> but anyway, um, spent this weekend um, doing some meditating and thinking about a few things, and um, I watched a couple of my favorite readers. And I just wanted to make a little video um, in reference to um, relationships. Or situationships. A friend of mine put on his post. He was upset because he, I guess, apparently he's single now. Um, he's not had a bad breakup, and he's single now. But he's upset because he he his post said more words or less. Um, why is it okay for um, females? Or women to um, be by themselves and want to find themselves and heal but men can't do it when they you know when and, and when but when men try to do it and say that they want to be they don't want to be in a committed relationship but they still want to see somebody or spend time with somebody then it's a problem and I was like wait a minute that you're that's two different things Two different things and I have been let me say this from my experience and I've been going through this for going on a year and a half I am single I am NOT seeing anyone I'm not dating anyone I'm not I don't have a man I don't have somebody on the side just to have sex with I'm not dating I'm not seeing any men whatsoever because I'm in what you probably heard in the spirit community um, spiritual community I'm in hermit mode which means I'm taking time I'm spending time with myself I'm you know praying meditating exercising eating right working on projects, keeping myself busy, trying to heal from heartbreak. So what this guy, this friend of mine was trying to say was that his way of healing from heartbreak is by seeing other people, but telling them that he doesn't want to be in a committed relationship. And then when they get mad at him, then he's like confused. It's like, that's because you put yourself in that situation. You weren't clear with the person that you were fooling around with. And I asked him, I said, well, how do you think you're going to heal yourself if you've jumped from this heartbreak into another situation that's causing you drama and making you waste your energy and all of that, having to explain yourself all the time and you're, you're basically, you're using them and they're using you. So they're sucking your energy dry and they're not replacing it with positive energy so how do you think you're going to heal and he couldn't answer the question that's what happens so I just want to go over my five main things my five main um, rules um, to take into consideration before putting myself back out there to date or to find my soulmate and my first one is never jump into a relationship right after a breakup the second one is I'm gonna go over all of them and then I'm gonna I'm gonna name them all and I'm gonna go over each one 
Second one is never get involved with someone who is already in a relationship. Number three, never lower your standards. Number four, never be afraid to tell them what you want or expect. And number five, love yourself more. Always love yourself more. Now the first one, never jump into a relationship right after a breakup. I know a lot of us think, okay, you know, I just broke up with so-and-so to get my mind off of it. Let me go find somebody else to spend time with. That is not the answer. That is not the answer. Especially if you have a breakup to where it is messy, you're heartbroken, the other person is heartbroken, and you, st you still have unfinished business with that person. Even if you have just broken up with someone and the breakup was amicable, you, you both agreed, okay, this is not good for us, and it did not end on a sour note. I mean, let's face it, no breakup is really good. There are some that are more amicable than others. But the point is, after you end a contract with someone or break up with someone, end an emotional contract with someone, it makes no sense to just jump right back into something else with somebody that you hardly know, thinking that they're going to give you something that that other person could not. Because nine times out of ten, it's not going to work out that way. You're just going to find yourself in more drama, more karmic energy, negative karmic energy, more heartbreak, and more unnecessary bullshit that you have to deal with. So take the time to heal yourself. Give yourself at least 30, 45, 60 days to get over that person, to get over the hurt, to start the healing process, to move on. I mean, there's no rush. So why would you want to let somebody in that you hardly know into your circle, into your energy, into your space that you hardly know? And you're still carrying heartbreak and hurt from this relationship you just broke off. So stop rushing things, okay? Take your time. There's no rush. You don't always have to be with someone. Just that does not make you a complete person being with someone. Just having someone there. It's just ugh. I mean it makes no sense. Just cuz you don't want to be alone. Maybe you should be alone. Get to know yourself better. And you won't keep repeating the same negative behaviors, the same behaviors that get you in these, these situations, these relationships that don't last. So take the time to get to know yourself, to spend time with yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being by yourself. Okay, the second one is never get involved with someone who is already in a relationship. That includes people that are married, people that are separated, people that are in a relationship but they're not talking to each other right now, um, people that are in relationships that are rocky, that go back and forth and back and forth, and they're in and out, in and out, together and then they break up, together and then they break up. So, because that means they're still attached to that person. Their souls are still attached to each other. They still have a, an emotional contract with that person. Even if you meet someone that is divorced and all they can talk about is how their ex hurt them and their ex this and their ex that, you don't want to get involved with that person because they have not let go. Being involved with someone who has not let go of a former lover, a former spouse, or boyfriend, or girlfriend, you're asking for trouble. You're asking for heartbreak because they have not let go. And that means 
they're not going to be attached to you. They're not going to get attached to you. They're not going to give you 100% of themselves. They're not going to put 100% into the relationship because they're still hung up on whoever. So that's what we call, um, that's three of swords. That's a third party situation. And you don't want that because most likely you're going to get hurt. There's nothing that you can give that person right now because they're still dealing with old shit. Giving them something new, they may like it and, and appreciate it a little bit and think make you think that they're happy with you for a little while, but then it's like, no, it's not going to last because that other person is going to show up somehow, some way, at some time and throw a monkey wrench and everything. I've been there. I know that's what happens because I got involved with someone that was quote unquote separated and they weren't really separated so and it went back and forth like that for going on three years and I knew what I was getting into but I didn't know I knew he was not divorced yet, but I kept believing him when he would tell me they're separated, that was it, he's going to get a divorce, and it never happened, because every time she felt him moving away from her more and more, that's when she wanted to hold on even tighter. She wanted to try again, and every time, all she had to do was say those words. Let's try again for the kid's sake. Let's try again because we've been together for so many years. It's like it didn't matter what excuse she gave him. He would, he would tell me, well, you know, we're going to try to work things out. Okay. I gave him three chances. That third time... I had to look at myself in the mirror and say, what the fuck are you doing? You knew this man was not detached from this person when you started this shit. What are you doing to yourself? You know he's not going to leave her for you. You know he doesn't care that you're the better person, that you treat him better than her. He doesn't care about any of that shit. He still has a contract with her. You need to leave him alone. And so that's what I did. But see, what happened was he tried to give me that same speech. It's the same speech of, oh, well, you know, we're going to try to work things out. And, you know, I really do love her still. And, you know, been together for so many years and whatever. Okay. But then I started thinking, okay, you know, he thinks that he can do this just enough to appease her or to see if it's going to work. And if it doesn't, he's going to come back. Well, you know, it didn't work and I'm sorry. But I didn't give him that opportunity. Because after he gave me the, the I'm going back speech, I called him back like a couple of days later. I was like, you know what? I said, I know it's not going to work out. Don't call me again. I said, there's no chance in hell that I'm going to give you if you're still married to her. I said, when you, I said, if you ever decide that you want to divorce her, you have fallen out of love with her, and you really want things to work, I said, I may listen to you. I said, but until then, I love myself too much for this, and I have to go. I said, just erase my number. Don't call me ever again. And that's what you have to do. You can't get involved with someone who still has emotional ties to someone else. Because all you're going to do is get hurt. 
and it's taken me going on a year and a half to get to the point to where I can say his name without feeling anger. I think if he was to come to my door right now, I wouldn't have the reaction that he's expecting. And I would not hurt the way I was at the beginning because now I'm like, I don't, I'm not in love with him anymore. I still care about him. Don't get me wrong. I still care about him and I still love him, but I love myself more. And I would never give him the opportunity to hurt me again. All that we had, that was fake. Because he was just doing that as a vacation, a getaway from the bullshit he was going through with her. And then coming to me. So now it's like, mm mm. And I know he still lurks about, and I know he still thinks about me and all that because we had that connection, but I don't care. I love me more, and I know my real soulmate is out there, and he's coming. But anyway, I've strayed a little bit from what I was talking about. But anyway, yeah, never get involved with someone who's still emotionally tied to someone who still has an emotional contract with someone because all you're going to do is end up hurt. Third one is never lower your standards and that was one of my standards. Never mess with a married man and that's what I did. He said he was separated. I was like, well he said he was separated, you know, they've been apart for a few months. Mm -mm. Lowered my standards lowered my standards now some of y'all might like that mess ah, never again never again because karma caught up with me the vengeance I got my heart broke but that's because I made that choice and I can't blame him for that I can blame him for his part of it but I can only blame myself lowering your standards I mean I'm not, I'm not saying have standards to wear they're just like unattainable but basic standards I mean if you're you want someone who's financially responsible someone who is um, physically fit someone who's certain age range you know within an age range um, someone who's around a, around a certain height and okay but I'm talking about don't lower your standards don't don't get involved with someone who's a, a wreck someone who is going to pull you down to low vibration I mean you don't want to get involved with and I'm not trying to down people that have drug problems or emotional problems or problems with the justice system or anything like that but if you are trying to be at a certain level if you're trying to reach a certain level um, be on a certain vibration if you are trying to be successful in life if you have your own business and you're trying to network with people that can get you somewhere that can get you to where you have a bigger clientele um, you have a bigger paycheck you have um, outstanding income, assets, abundance. Messing with people that are considered low vibrational, people that are struggling, people that are having some serious issues, I don't think you necessarily want to do that. Because it could possibly mean you losing a lot. It could possibly mean you, you losing a, everything. Having to start all over again. So, when you're starting to date people, it's okay to ask them what do they do. It's okay if you want to, as soon as you get their whole full name, do a background check. There's nothing wrong with that. You have to be careful these days. 
kings and queens. I'm not just talking about women checking up on men. Men need to check up on women too. You need to know who it is that you're letting into your life. Who you're letting get that close to you. Number That goes into number four. Never be afraid to tell them what you want or expect. When you're sitting there on your first date, okay, I know when you first meet someone and it's all cute and you're flirting and everything and sending cute little text messages or calling on the phone and saying cute little flirty things, but when it comes right down to it, you need to have a list of questions to ask this person. It's like a job interview because they are interviewing to be your man. They're interviewing to be your woman. It's okay to ask them questions. If they don't want to answer, then maybe you should move on to the next person. Because to me, that's like they might they they might have something to hide. I mean, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you were born, how many brothers and sisters you have, what do you do for a living, do you have any degrees, did you graduate high school, um, do you have any criminal problem problems with the justice system, do you have a long criminal history, have you ever been arrested, have you ever been to prison. Do you have a drug problem? Have you ever done drugs? Anything. It's okay for you to ask. If they say, oh, that's a bit personal. Yes, it is personal because you're you're here taking me out on a date. You're trying to get to know me. For what reason? Because if you want to be my man, if you want to be my woman, you need to tell me everything. Things like that are important. Because if you don't find them out right away, and then you start spending time with this person and getting intimate with this person... Then you find out, it's like, especially if you get intimate with them and then somebody ends up pregnant or somebody ends up with a disease or you end up marrying this person, but you didn't ask questions. Oh, I didn't know. How come you didn't know? Didn't you ask them? Or didn't you suspect something? If you suspected something, why didn't you do a background check? Why didn't you look into it? People can look into it. I mean, today's technology allows you to look into that shit. So there's no excuse. There's no excuse. The fifth one is always love yourself more. If you're if you're in a in a relationship or a situationship and you're just not happy, or this person is just like acting up and just not doing what's expected, and it's just you're just not happy. You're not you don't feel like they're contributing to the relationship. Move on. I know it hurts. I've been there. I've been hurt. But you need to love yourself more. Why would you stay with someone that's not that you're not happy with? Why would you want to be miserable? There's nothing wrong with moving on. I mean, just letting them know, hey, you know, things aren't working that way, working out. I don't feel like it's going to amount to anything I'm not happy so I think we need to move on away from each other need to break up there's nothing wrong with that or if you're just now starting to get to know somebody and you feel that you know they're a little shady or they're not what they claim to be at first and start seeing lies and the truth is falling out, turning into lies. It's like, okay, you know, I got to go. I can't have that in my life. You should always look for something positive. Always look for somebody that's positive, someone that is a go-getter, someone that is has go that has goals, someone that has future plans, someone that... I'm not saying they have to be rich, but someone who is stable, financially stable. Not someone who owes everybody in the neighborhood or owes everybody in town. That's always trying to, you know, get money here and there to pay off this. And no. Nah. Or asking you for money. Come on now. Y'all should know better than that. Y'all should know what type of person that you're dealing with before you actually lay down with them and become intimate with them. This world 
in the age of this technology, this um, high speed technology, people just move so fast and so quickly. This online dating stuff, I've tried it, but I had no positive results come of it. And so now I'm like, you couldn't get me to pay anything or even do it for free. No, if I can't meet a man the old-fashioned way, if I can't run into my soulmate that way or without having to go to one of those dating sites, then I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Because those things, they move too fast and anybody and everybody can sign up on those things and you don't know who you're talking to until you meet them somewhere. And it's not the person in the picture. It's like, wait a minute. I thought that was, I thought he was supposed to be, you know, in good shape and six feet tall, 190 pounds. And, and you meet somebody that is 5'10", 350 pounds, zits all over his face, with a record, <laughs> being a, some kind of sexual predator or something. You never know. So you have to be careful of that stuff. But anyway, I mean... Y'all need to be careful out there. Always love yourself more. Ask questions. Get to know the person. Don't fool around with somebody that's already involved. Because, I mean, how would you like it if you was with somebody and you found out your man was being um, pursued by somebody else or that he was pursuing somebody else? You wouldn't like the third party situation. You wouldn't like it. So... Trust me, I've learned my lesson. I learned my lesson the hard way. Never again. But find your own man. Ask him all the questions you want. And if he can, if he refuses to answer them, then move on to somebody else. He's not worth it then. That means he's hiding something. So just be careful out there. And always love yourself. But anyway, I'm going to go because i got to get up early. Go to work. And um, if there's some, you know, make your own list. If there's a list of things that you require, make your own list. I mean, this is just a small list. This is just something I thought up, you know. I'm just sitting around thinking about things. But, um... This is just a list of five. There's probably some more that I can add on here. <laughs> but um, these are five basic things um, to do before actually dating or getting involved with someone. But um, if you have your own list, you know, write it out, stick it on the wall, live by it. If you know that that's what you need to do, if that's what's going to make you happy, if that's what's going to keep you from a bunch of drama, a bunch of karmic relationships, karmic people, then, yeah, write your list out and live by it. But anyway, I'm going to go now, okay? I want y'all to stay cool. I will try to do, um, I'll try to do a, um, oracle reading this week. First day of school tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be one of those weeks. Um, our school system is on going to be online only for the first six weeks and everybody's trying to run around and figure out what application they fill out what where they're going to get a laptop at who's their child's teacher i didn't mean to do this i didn't mean to sign up for that so it's it's a big mess <laughs> but anyway um y'all have a good week okay it's the middle of august already people Fall is almost here. I like fall weather. I like it when it's cool. I don't really like when it's snow, but sometimes I do. But I'm um, better than the heat. <laughs> but um, it is almost it's halfway through August. I can't believe this month has gone by so fast. But um, y'all have a good week at work. If you are working, I'm glad you know you still have your position. If you're not able to work, you know. You're in my thoughts, in my prayers, and I'm going to be um, hoping that, you know, 
you guys find some kind of assistance, some kind of relief, because I know it can't be easy. Um, those that still have their position, you know, you're blessed. Thank the universe that you still have something to help you take care of your kids and pay your bills. Um, Y'all pray that this Congress, they get some sense and stop playing games with everybody's lives. Vote that money. Vote that money in. Um, and that's another thing. Those of you, I don't care which party you belong to, whether you belong to a party, the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, or Independent, whatever you are, um, I don't know if you want to necessarily rely on the U.S. Postal Service. If I were you, I would mask up, I would glove up, I would suit up, and I would show up to the polls on November, November 3rd, because this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. That's all I got to say. I'm not going to go any further than that, but we're praying for y'all. Y'all have a good week at work. Love y'all, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? Peace, love, and light.